Good afternoon. Very nice. Nice crowd. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, welcome to the 2017 uh, Indiana State of Higher Education uh, address. And we're, uh, again, we're really thrilled that all of you uh, braved the, the uh, pending snow to come and, and uh, talk with us. So uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to welcome you. For those of you who I have not met and don't know, my name is Dan Peterson. I have the, the great pleasure of serving as uh, this year's chairman of the Indiana Commission for Higher Education. Really appreciate it and, and have enjoyed uh, this work uh, greatly. I uh, want to also start by thanking uh, Ivy Tech as our hosts, President Elsperman, Sue, and all your wonderful staff uh, and, and colleagues for hosting us, number one, and also to the students, it's such talented uh, culinary students who are going to uh, provide some wonderful refreshments afterwards for our reception. Really hope everyone is able to, to stick around and in, enjoy their good work. Um, very excited to uh, introduce uh, Commissioner Teresa Lubbers, uh, whom I know is not a stranger to probably anyone in this room, uh, but let me bear with me for a minute and let me talk about her just a little bit. So what you're going to hear today, I think, is, is Teresa's continued uh, passion and our collective passion around the success of all students uh, of all ages in Indiana, no matter where they are and what they're, we want to make sure that we're able to help them succeed and uh, reach their full potential, no matter what their backgrounds are, where they come from, where they want to go. So you're going to hear that, I think, ingrained in, in her comments. Teresa, again, has, uh, has been the Commissioner of uh, Higher Education for Indiana since 2009. Prior to that, as many, most of you know, she was a state senator for 17 years with a heavy focus and attention to all things education, especially higher education. Um, and chaired the Senate uh, Education and, and Career Development Committee for, for many, many years. What you, what you also have to know, and I'm sure m do know uh, about Teresa, is her undying commitment and passion to students in Indiana. And it comes through in everything she does. It comes through in everything the collective, the wonderful staff that she's built around her have done. And, uh, and it's, it's uh, inspirational and an enjoyable uh, group to work with, given their knowledge and their expertise, and again, this passion uh, for Indiana students of all ages. So um, she's, a, she's extremely knowledgeable on the subject and has become so over many years, including her years here at the commission, which really shows in so many different ways, both here in Indiana, but also nationally as, a, as certainly a thought leader uh, and nationally recognized expert on these issues. And so it's my, my great pleasure to introduce Commissioner Teresa Lubbers, uh, my good friend. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dan. I really appreciate that kind introduction and your service to the Indiana Commission for Higher Education, both as a valued member for many years and as our current chairman as well. It's been my privilege to work alongside you throughout these years and to benefit from your leadership and counsel. I think all of us who know you know your many contributions to so many organizations and your career with Cook Group, uh, and they both have made Indiana a much better place, so thank you. Cook Group has accepted the mantle of leadership as well, partnering with Ivy Tech Community College and local school districts to skill up employees in the community. Faced with the challenge of filling middle skill jobs, Cook created a program that addresses the mismatch between employers and their preparation and job demands by actually furthering education and workforce training. In some cases, Cook hires adults who lack a high school diploma, helps them earn their high school equivalency, and then pays for them to get the certificates or degrees they need to advance and fill high need positions within the company. It's a great example of a triple win strategy. Education for the employee, a skilled workforce for the employer, and a stronger economy for the state. Much of what I will be sharing with you this afternoon echoes these themes of adapting to changing times and strengthening connections between educators and employers for the benefit of our students and our state. It is with this mission in mind that I'm pleased to welcome you to the fifth annual commission, a state of higher education address. Several of our commission members are here with us today. 
One got stuck in Chicago and couldn't make it, but I'd like to ask those who are with us to stand and be recognized. We know that Indiana's path to success leads through higher education, whether that is a certificate, a degree, or other workforce credential. Six years ago, Indiana established the big goal of 60% of Hoosiers having a quality degree or credential beyond high school by 2025. Raising our educational attainment level is hard work, but we must, it must remain at the very top of our agenda a point that Governor Holcomb made in his recent State of, State of the State address. Too many Hoosiers lack the requisite skills, but it is important to note that we're making progress. Indiana's attainment needle has moved to 41% of Hoosiers with some sort of education beyond high school. That's over 100,000 more adults with a post-secondary credential today. While we still lag behind the national average, degree and certificate completion is improving. Indiana is actually tied for the fifth highest increase in associate degrees or higher since 2013. And there are other signs of progress too. Graduation rates and on-time completion are at an all-time high in Indiana. More college students are on track to graduate by taking and completing 30 credits per year and more low-income and first-generation students are graduating from college than ever before. These are encouraging results, but there's still much work to be done. Over the next 10 years, Indiana will need roughly 1 million new skilled employees to replace retiring baby boomers and to fill the jobs we're creating each year. Our answer to a few key questions will decide Indiana's future as we move into our state's third century. Are we doing enough to cultivate and develop the talent that resides within our state? How do we attract and retain talented individuals and innovative companies? And is our future more promising than our past? It's not a stretch to say that Indiana's future depends on the answer to these questions if we prepare more people for the jobs of today and of the future. Later on, I'll introduce you to a few Hoosier stories, stories of personal resolve that must become a statewide movement that ensures that students don't just go to college, but that they graduate, while also bringing more adults back for further education and training. Let me be clear, students aren't in this alone. Our state leaders, including Governor Holcomb, Superintendent McCormick, Commissioner Braun, and the members of the Indiana General Assembly are committed to advancing policies and practices that work for everyone. In this dynamic economy, your first credential, whether that is a certificate or a degree, will likely not be your last. The worker who needs a short-term certificate today may need a degree or other training tomorrow to keep up with the ever-changing technologies. A recent report by McKenzie and Company noted the increasing potential of automation and artificial intelligence to perform many tasks once reserved for humans. Their findings, nearly half of work activities today could be automated using available technology, and the scales will continue to tilt as more jobs and business processes are redefined. More evidence of the changes to come. An article just last week in Chief Executive indicated that tasks performed by robots will rise from an average of 10% across manufacturing industries to nearly 25% by 2025. We must prepare for these inevitable shifts that reduce the need for less educated employees by skilling up our workforce with high demand certificates and degrees. All the evidence suggests that we need many more of both to sustain our economy, an economy that will work for all Hoosiers. For many, success will require stacking several of these credentials over the course of their career. 
Our students, especially first generation and low income students, often lack even a basic understanding of the full range of career options, or they have an outdated notion of what jobs look like today. I hope you're familiar with our current strategic plan, Reaching Higher, Delivering Value. In it, we call for more intentional career planning, starting early in school and continuing through college completion. Too many students, for instance, believe that a career in manufacturing means working in a hot, dirty, and dangerous environment. The reality, today, advanced manufacturing employees are as likely to wear white lab coats as blue coveralls. Similarly, many think that a career in the tech sector is limited to computer programming. The reality, tech companies need managers and marketers as well as coders. Addressing these gaps between student perception and reality requires more structured career exploration, work-based work learning, and candid discussions with students about their individual strengths, aspirations, and real-world expectations. That's why in 2012, the Commission strengthened Indiana's 21st Century Scholars Program with new expectations for career exploration and workplace experience right alongside standards for academic preparation and, career pl and college planning. This year's graduating scholars will be the first high school class required to complete the Scholars Success Program. The result, more scholars are on track to earn their scholarship putting us on track to outpace the historical average of students earning the 21st century scholarship. Some, st some schools are already taking steps to ensure that all of their students, regardless of family income, complete these same expectations. The strength of the 21st century scholars program today and the many thousands of Hoosier lives that have been changed by the program over the past 26 years are a fitting tribute to its architect, Stan Jones. As many of you know, Stan passed away this week after a long, hard-fought illness. Stan was a great friend, a national thought leader, and a tenacious champion for all students, especially low-income and first-generation students. I know that if Stan were with us today, he would want to steer our attention away from him and keep it squarely focused on the students. In his honor, Stan's family has created the Stan Jones Memorial Scholarship in support of 21st Century Scholars. Donations can be made online at completecollege.org. And so I'm particularly pleased that we have with us today Leah Gaudet, a 21st Century Scholar, a senior at North Central High School, and a mentee with Starfish Initiative, a local nonprofit that pairs scholars with mentors in the community. Leah has finished her Scholar Success Program requirements five months ahead of graduation, an experience that she found useful, especially in helping her understand the financial aid process and keeping her focused and organized. This coming fall, she will be attending Indiana University, where she will major in neuroscience. She hopes to attend med school after she graduates. As a first-generation college student, she said that being a scholar has meant everything to her ability to attend college. Leah's success and the success of students like her across the state mean everything to our state's future. Leah, we know you and so many scholars are going to do great things. Thank you for your hard work and for joining us today with your family who couldn't be prouder of you. Clearly, more Hoosier students would benefit from these same experiences and expectations. And that's why, in 2017, the Commission will advocate that the Scholar Success Program be extended to all high school students. Just this week, we launched a new and improved version of our Scholar Track system. It seamlessly integrates all state financial aid programs and tracks student completion of the Scholar Success Program. This fall, we intend to open the Scholar Success Program to all Hoosier students and connect Scholar Track to other state resources, like the Indiana Career Explorer. These upgrades will make it easier for more families and schools to keep their students on track. Our students need academic preparation that's closely aligned with their college and career plans. 
but too often students aren't completing the right courses to be on target for college or a good job. I look forward to working with Superintendent McCormick and the State Board of Education to revisit Indiana's high school diploma standards and their alignment with the expectations of employers and higher education. Strengthening our diploma means completing four years of high school math aligned with a meaningful career path that provides students with both purpose and preparation. Over the past five years, we've seen a 10 percentage point improvement in the number of high school graduates who are college ready. But nearly one in five still need remediation. And we know that students who enter college needing rem remediation are far less likely to graduate. We cannot afford to play those odds. To some degree, it's not surprising that students often aren't equipped to meet employer demand. Many have never held a job at all, either in high school or college. Youth employment today is at an all-time low nationwide, and less than one-third of students have completed an internship or had a job during college. It's tempting to bemoan the state of affairs today or blame generational differences, but it's much more productive to take action. Educators and employers must join together to provide students with meaningful work experiences that complement their classroom learning. And fortunately, there are signs of progress around the state. Four years ago, Noblesville High School launched an internship that has grown to include the more than 100 local employers, many of which had been largely unknown to these students prior to the program. On the post-secondary level, Ball State University offers, offers numerous experiential learning opportunities, 30 this semester alone. Recently, their telecommunications department was honored by the General Assembly for a meth prevention project in Delaware County. We commend companies for making these opportunities possible, but the truth is that employers have as much to gain, if not more, than the students. Employers not only gain valuable help and first-class products and services from students, they're building the next generation of employees at a fraction of the cost that comes with traditional recruitment, training, and retention. Nick Hoagland, Chief Operating Officer with Backhaul Direct, and that's a Indianapolis-based logistic firm, knows this firsthand. Nick says, for a long time, our perspective was, shouldn't the schools be reaching out to us? Don't they need internships? Really, that was the wrong perspective. We had to start taking ownership of the process. Backhaul Direct now hosts interns year-round, and several of their current employees are former interns. Indiana must match more students and employers if we're going to meet workforce needs. We also know that the sooner a student identifies a career aspiration, the more likely that they will graduate. With that in mind, I'm excited to announce a new partnership we're launching this spring, Road Trip Indiana. Based on Road Trip Nation, which has appeared nationally on PBS for more than a decade, Road Trip Indiana is a first-of-its-kind partnership located on a, and focused on a specific state. Road Trip Indiana will showcase the ever-evolving nature of our workforce, provide Indiana schools with career-focused curriculum and classroom resources, and highlight what our state has to offer to 70 million households nationwide. You know, we talk a lot about traditional college students, students who go straight from high school and live on a college campus. But the truth is, the term traditional student is outdated. In fact, only about a quarter of students fit that description. We must not forget about the million plus adults in Indiana who need more education and training. Our You Can Go Back program was launched a year ago to better support returning adults. The 750,000 Hoosiers with some college but no degree. That's 21% of the working age population. In one year, we've seen impressive results. With the help of direct outreach from the commission, support from our colleges, and the assistance of Indiana's adult student grant, more than 9,000 Hoosier adults have already re-enrolled in school. It's clearly working, and we must keep this momentum going to meet Indiana's big goal. But more than that, it's about students, like Mark Brewer, 
who are working hard to better their lives. Mark, who joins us today, decided to return to school at Ivy Tech, where he'll graduate this May with a degree in advanced automation and robotics technology. Working full time, being married, caring for a toddler and two teenagers, and beginning to teach in introductory classes in his department at Ivy Tech. Mark said, it's been stressful at times. <laughs> he stayed motivated throughout the process, however, taking three or four classes each semester. His nieces and nephews, along with other members of his family, now look to him for homework help and college advice. Mark, helping more hardworking Hoosiers like you return to school will be essential to Indiana's long-term success. We understand that a two or four year degree is not the best fit for everyone. Many Hoosiers need a shorter term credential to get ahead. In the past five years alone, Indiana has seen the number of certificates awarded increase by nearly one third. But there are thousands more Hoosiers whose fortunes could change with added education and training. With that in mind, the commission is pleased to be partnering with Governor Holcomb the Department of Workforce Development, and the legislature on a new program, the Workforce Ready Grant. It's designed for the 1.4 million working age Hoosiers who have a high school education or less, and the thousands more who have some college credit but no degree or certificate. On average, these Hoosiers have seen their wages and employment prospects shrink over the last 35 years, and their situation is more dire now than ever. They have bills to pay. They have people depending on them. They don't have the luxury of time. They need to complete a credential as quickly as possible for the increased earning potential that can change their lives and that of their loved ones. Indiana is among the most generous states in terms of need-based financial aid, fifth nationally. But most of these programs were designed for full-time students and students who are pursuing an associate or bachelor's degree. The Workforce Ready Grant, currently under consideration by the General Assembly, will be a first-of-its-kind opportunity in Indiana with a clear message for working adults. If you enroll in a high-demand certificate program from Ivy Tech or Vincennes, Indiana will make sure that your costs are covered. A parallel program by the Department of Workforce Development would also cover the cost of high-value non-credit certificates. We must embrace more opportunities like the Workforce Ready Grant to adapt our approaches to the needs of working adults and employers. Today I'm not here to make fanciful predictions, but I can draw a few conclusions with absolute confidence and certainty. Number one, Hoosiers who complete higher levels of education will be far better off than those without it, especially when strong academics are complemented by relevant workplace learning. Number two, employers who focus on creating, not waiting for the talent they need, by partnering with educators to provide work and learn experiences for students and continuing education for their employees will prosper. More employers must recognize these efforts for what they are, not simply community service or employee benefits, but deliberate investments in their own talent pipeline. And number three, higher education institutions that partner with employers to integrate academic and applied learning will offer the most relevant education. These institutions will reap the benefit of increased enrollment in a new era when competency is king and value is the true currency. Several years ago, the father of the theory of disruptive innovation, Professor Clayton Christensen, included higher education on the list of industries that have resisted the forces of disruption for 100 years. But now he sees that technology has enabled a new cycle of disruptive innovation. Most enterprises have accepted that they must adapt to remain relevant. Higher education must too. The relative orderliness of disruptive innovation is going to be supercharged over the next decade as disruption and innovation are compounded by accelerating economic, social, and technological changes. 
The world of education beyond high school has been a tranquil sea compared to what lies ahead. All around us are signs of change. Like the half hour before a big summer storm, the air smells different, the wind feels different, the sky looks different. You can feel the creeping edges, explosive changes, and big opportunities. What is the most important thing we can do to come out on top as we confront this watershed period of change? Remain adaptable. Each of us must be open to change. Have a keen eye for opportunities that might advance our goals. Be wary of that which seems too good to be true. But be enthusiastic about things that have never been done. The future will mean different things to different players in the game. For faculty, adapting means embracing technology and leading efforts to align what students learn in school with what they do in life. For institutions, it means breaking down barriers to innovation and new delivery models. For employers, it means developing not only the talent for today, but preparing the workforce of tomorrow. And for students, it means planning for an ever-changing career, not just your first job. So here's my final prediction. Those who grasp the importance of adaptability in uncertain times will thrive. Those who do not will be left behind. Today, we stand on the threshold of deciding our future as a state, depending on how we answer the questions I raised earlier. Are we doing enough to cultivate and develop the talent that resides within our state as long as we remain steadfast in our efforts to provide opportunities for all Hoosiers in a dynamic economy? How do we retain and attract talented individuals and innovative companies? By developing a culture that values adaptability, educational attainment, and workforce preparation. Is our future more promising than our past? Only if Indiana's celebrated work ethic is matched by an equal commitment to quality education and job creation. The only remaining question we have is, do we have the will, the sense of urgency, and the commitment to take Indiana to the next level? Our best hope and our obligation is to build the human capital for 21st century demands. I remain optimistic about our future and on behalf of the Indiana Commission for Higher Education, we stand ready to help all Hoosiers, help them realize that promise. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lovers for those thought-provoking remarks. Uh, there's a reception in the back of the room to follow. Thanks to the, our gracious host, Ivy Tech. Please join us, join us to stay for that. Thank you. <laughs>